1057 The Hawk, WCHRFM Manahawkin, an ultimate classic rock radio station. Classic rock for the Jersey Shore. 1057 The Hawk. 1057 The Hawk, classic rock for the Jersey Shore. Welcome to the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner, powered by Gateway Toyota, Route 37 East in Toms River. Get it all at Gateway. Kevin Williams, Ed Sarluca, and Bob Batters talk Shore Conference High School football on the Shore Sports Network. 105.7 The Hawk and 1057thehawk.com. And a very good Wednesday evening, live from the office restaurant and lounge in Tom's River. It is the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner. We talk Shore Conference high school football till 8 o'clock tonight. Guys, you don't know how excited I am. I always wanted to follow Alice Cooper. <laughs> Coming on after school's out for summer is just great, although it's very depressing because you probably won't hear that song again until May or June. But anyway, uh, it is uh, week three of the high school football season, and uh, tonight the Mariners are in the house. We talk Tom's River North football uh, that'll be the focus of our show tonight. Uh, we'll chat with head coach Dave Oswitz and his two senior co-captains, Stevon True and Jordan Johnson. We'll do that uh, in a little bit. But as we always do, I open up by saying hello to my colleagues, Ed Sarluk and Bob Batters. And we take a look back at last weekend, which going into the weekend, guys, we didn't really see a whole bunch of games that we thought were significant. But... We certainly got a couple of surprises and maybe a little bit of a stunner involving an Ocean versus a Monmouth County team, and uh, that Monmouth County team sort of righted their ship in a matter of three hours on Friday night. Yeah, it was a it was a make or break game uh, for St. John Vianney. I think coming in at 0-2 uh, was certainly a possibility when you looked at the Lancers' schedule, but when you have a 38-game winning streak within the conference coming in, certainly surprised to see them at 0-2, and, and they welcomed Brick, uh, you know, into their home field, and they were able to come win, come away with a really big 21-7 victory. Uh, you know, Brick was the number four team uh, in our top ten going into the week. Um, and again, that's they could have they were looking at an 0-3 hole potentially. Instead, they turned it around, played well defensively, got a nice performance out of their sophomore quarterback Josh East, who's, who's filling in uh, for, you know, for the player who will be their starter. So, a very important win for the Lancers, and they thrust themselves back into a. You know the discussion now back into the top 10 as well and uh they're now one and one in division so there, there's still some time you know certainly for them to make some more noise yeah the uh, the big guns you know rbc rumson continue to roll i mean uh i think they are just right now as things begin to settle down in week three their head and shoulders better than just about everybody else in the shore uh would you agree, Bob? Yeah, and, and throw modern day prep in there as modern well. Modern day prep, uh, yeah, sort of yeah. like the team that nobody really hears about, they, you know. But they do play a much better, I, I mentioned it in my blog this week, a much better schedule this year. So they will be tested. And there's a possibility that they could meet RBC in the playoffs. Yeah, I think we're going to have same some, bracket. some interesting uh, – Late you know, season matchups. Exactly, matchups featuring modern day as the season goes on. We, uh, we obviously put the uh, Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner jinx on Brick last week. They <laughs> yeah, were we on did. our show last week. For a while, it looked like both were shaky because Point Borough was in a little bit of trouble. Manusquan. Uh, Manusquan. Manusquan. Yeah, it's not bit, you know, so just don't tell that to the North people. <laughs> but, um, but that had to be a really disappointing loss for Brick. You know, we had them on last week. We talked with them. They all knew about 42 nothing last year, and they thought, you know, this was payback time. And, you know, to go up there and kind of feel like this is your chance to sort of, you know, make amends for that. And, and it was 21-7, but from all accounts, it was a pretty dominating 21-7 Lancers victory. Yeah, Brick's offense really struggled to move the ball consistent, consistently. They had some plays here and there. Uh, Cole Groeschel, a couple nice runs. Jimmy Lebo doing some things here and there, but they didn't really put sustained drives together. Defense played well. You know, really, the last touchdown came in the final minutes of the game, so it's a 14-0, 14-7 game most of the way, but again, they just couldn't get anything going offensively. Give credit to St. John Vianney's defense, uh, and St. John Vianney was able to take advantage and you know, put the ball in the end zone just enough to get the win. And just to follow up, you saw Brick, of course, the week before when they beat Brick Memorial, but their offense was not spectacular that day. Their first touchdown was a fumble return. You know, they, they didn't really put a lot of yardage on the board, so it sort of sounds like their defense is way ahead of their offense. Well, again, you know, I, I wrote about it this week. I think they have to get their big-time stud into the action a little more, and that's Cole Groeschel. I mean, he's one of the leading 
returning players in the shore, if not the state, hasn't been a whole lot uh, you know, involved yet so far in two weeks. What else last weekend sort of resonates with you guys? Uh, well, you know. I saw the Freehold Brick Memorial game on Saturday afternoon. Freehold off, uh, you know, coming off of this Ashante Worthy last year, which is all you heard about. Although we did also hear about Matt Krauss. We had him on the show and impressed us last year as a receiver. But this year he has taken over the reins at the quarterback position and he has led them to two victories. And this week, you know, they've got to step it up again because they've got another big one, Bob. And Kevin, as you were saying, coming into last week, there weren't a lot of games that jumped out. But I think once the week ended, there were some pretty significant and interesting results you know, that played out. I was in Manalpin on Friday night, uh, and you had Middletown South coming away with, with a big 17-14 win on a you know, last-second field goal, walk-off field goal, really, by uh, senior Chris Kaldrovitz. And, and that's a big win for Middletown South. And of course, they had that lopsided loss to start the season out against Pennsylvania Power Coatesville. They came back with a a big shot out of Freel Township. Then you get the win against Manalpin, which you know, has been a very good rivalry. Manalpin has had the better of that rivalry over the past six, seven years. So a big win for Middletown South. And you know, their coach, Steve Anthony, she said after the game, it's not going to be pretty what we do, but we can find a way to get it done. And that makes them a dangerous team. How good is the Bucks from Red Bank? A very impressive win over Homedale, 20 to 17. I think that sort of surprised everybody. Um, how good are they, Bob? It's interesting because th that's a non-division game, uh, and it's you know a Red Bank team that is certainly. You know, Excuse me, I said it was 28-26 yes. that victory. <laughs> certainly, you know Red Bank behind Red Bank Catholic and Long Branch at least in that division, where Holmdel is looking at as a title contender mm -hmm. in the national division. You know, Red Bank goes in and wins that game. Really, a great game. I was able to see some of that on film. Back and forth, Red Bank wins with a touchdown pass with, with 10 seconds left and then a two-point conversion to get the win, 28-26. And uh, the Bucks have some playmakers. You know, Nigel Mitchell uh, and Makai Mickens uh, were big-time playmakers last year. They're out of the game this year, and their quarterback, Jack Chamberlain, has been making some plays, uh, and they got some good defensive performances. So a really nice win for the Bucks to go to 2-0 uh, to there. You know, I don't know if there's such thing as an ugly victory <laughs> because the ugliest of victories is better than a pretty loss. Jackson got an ugly victory Friday night in a game we broadcast. They beat Wall 12-6 in overtime. The game matched the field conditions just perfectly, you know, sloppy. Uh, just it, it was a game in which both defenses were superb. I, it just was very few big plays the entire game. Neither team could ever really get an offensive flow. You know, you never got one of those, you know, three or four nice plays in a row. But the bottom line is Jackson comes away with a win. They've given up six points in two weeks, and... They look like a team that uh, will be reckoned with in that division, and I would think right now would probably rate the role of favorite. Yeah, coming into the season, the Jaguars' defense, I, I think everyone who was paying attention to that knew they were going to be pretty good. And they've done that without linebacker Chance Benjamin, who was yep. one of their best players last season, the third-team all-shore player who's been injured. But you know they've been good, really good, especially up front on the defensive line with with their junior Colin McCarthy at defensive end. I mean, he was a game wrecker against the Crimson Knights, and you guys saw it firsthand. 13 yeah. tackles, six tackles for a loss, and a couple sacks. Almost had the game-winning you know, fumble return uh, on that punt that they ruled down. So, yeah, they've got some players on that side of the ball, and they've certainly been riding that defense so far. Yeah, that was a, a tough break for McCarthy because our own uh, Greg Lerner uh, had the video of it and showed it to me right on the sideline after it happened, and that was a good legal play. Uh, you know, the uh, referee had called the quarterback down, I mean, excuse me, the punter, the backup punter, by the way, yep. down on a, uh, a mishandled punt, uh, and uh, McCarthy scooped and ran it in. Uh, nobody was catching him, but unfortunately it was called back because he was down. Now... The Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner jinx has not applied to Barnegat, <laughs> who was on week one, right? Rob Davis and, right. Uh, and Sean Morris. And Barnegat's off to a 2-0 and start, and they went on the road and beat Shore last week. 17-14, Charlie Cotton, 158 yards rushing. That was a huge win for the Bengals. Never it, easy to win at Shore. No, and that's an impressive win for Barnegat. That's become a little bit of a rivalry. You know, those teams rivalry. played each other in the past two seasons as non-divisional opponents. Barney won the first year, Shore won last season. Now Barney gets the win to you know, take the little lead in the series. And as you said, Ed, that's an impressive win to go up there to Feeney Field and come away with the victory. And also considering Shore's first offensive 
play, he took the 52 yards for a touchdown. So Barnett gets in a hole right then and there. He said they only gave up a touchdown the rest of the way. Kind of just clawed back into it. They had an Aaron Osborne 35-yard field goal in the third quarter. Uh, and it was on their defense from there. And their defense, you know, held and won them that game, got the ball back late, and allowed them to run out the clock. You know, as I look out into our crowd, and we're going to have the Mariners on pretty soon, uh, just about their entire team is here. And I don't see anybody under 200 pounds. Do you, Kevin? No. <laughs> I mean, Coach got, Oz's. Yeah, Coach Oz is under Coach two. Oz's. But they got some big guys, you know, in attendance here tonight, and we're going to talk to a couple of them later. One other team I definitely want to mention, uh, which was our Jersey Mike's team yep. of the week for this week, is Pinelands. You know, the Wildcats picked up a really big 26-22 come from behind win over Matawan. You know, a season of adversity for Pinelands. You know, the high school is closed because of renovations they're doing. So everyone's across the street, the junior high school. They're packed in like, like sardines over there. They don't have a home field because that is also being redone. So at the beginning of the season, it's, we don't have any home games. You know, it was a wait and see. We'll try to get one, which they did this past week, and they played at the Little Egg Harbor Sports Complex. But, again, that's got to be tough for that group. Uh, it's not a big group in terms of numbers, how many they have. But, you know, boy, that was a big win. They're down 16 nothing in the first quarter, and they come back and win 26-22. Their offensive line was just outstanding, paved the way. Evan Burton, 261 and three TDs. Sophomore Nick DeLeo, 130 yards uh, and a touchdown. They're running that more of that spread offense, but they're still pretty physical, and, and that was a nice win for them. And Ed got to go down to Tuckerton yesterday to present them with the game ball as our team of the week, and even more importantly, $500 in Jersey Mike's gift cards, which we give it every week. And with only about 29 or 30 kids on the team, my first comment was, everyone gets a whole sub and maybe another half. Yeah, I, they may get two each, you know. <laughs> and I, I just was so impressed. You know, I talked to Matt for a while before. Matt and, Fuller, and, the head coach. Yes, Matt Fuller. And, you know, I just, what those kids are going through, you know, I went into their makeshift locker room, which is really a classroom next to the field, you know, not enough room. You know, I, you couldn't fit any more than 28 kids, to tell you the <laughs> truth, you know. And, you know, and then they've got to, you know, truck over about a half a mile to the practice field. Uh, just a tough situation. And, and then I look, you know, a mile down the road there is the school under extreme construction. You know, just a tough situation, especially for the seniors. They're going to reap the rewards down the line, however, but, you know, when the field gets done. But just a tough situation, you got to give them credit. And they were very excited. That was awesome. So that sort of takes you through this past weekend, which turned out to be a pretty good one in the Shore Conference. When we come back, uh, part one of our Mariner Odyssey, we'll talk with head coach Dave Alzowitz. We'll do that right after this. You're listening to the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner on 105.7 the Hawk. You're a football fan, and sometimes you want to watch the games with your friends and other fans. The Office Restaurant and Lounge loves football and invites you to watch all the games in their 28 HD TVs and take advantage of their awesome $6 football menu. On Thursday and Sunday, buy a 22-ounce mug for $4 and get refills of Miller Lite or Coors Light for just $2. Enjoy football with your friends at Tom Zivers Place to meet and eat for 42 years. The Office Restaurant and Lounge at the intersection of Route 37 and Main Street. 36 month lease with approved credit through TFS. Corolla 5189 and RAV4 4988 due at signing. $0 security deposit. Excludes tax. Tag title 439 type fee. 10K miles per year. Ends 930 2018. Get it all at Gateway Toyota. It's tailgate time right now at Gateway Toyota. Drive new 2019 Corolla LE CBT or 2018 RAV4 LE all wheel drive. Your choice. Only $139 a month. $139 a month. Get it all at Gateway Toyota. Tom's River Gateway Toyota.com. You're listening to the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner. Classic rock for the Jersey Shore. 1057 The Hawk and 1057 The Hawk.com. And welcome back. We are at the office restaurant and lounge in Tom's River in the West Room, the newly renovated West Room where. I'm noticing there's a lot of TVs with the Yankee Red Sox game on. There aren't too many. Are there any with the Mets Phillies game? Yeah, on? yeah. There's a couple. No, they're all Yankees Red Sox now. Oh, looks they like. switched oh. off. Man. I mean, uh, it's kind of the way it should yeah, be. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> all right. I just had to get that in. Uh, we're uh, delighted to be joined by uh, Dave Ozowitz, the uh, head coach of the Tom's River North Mariners. The Mariners out to the 2-0 start. The uh, 
a gut-wrenching win over Manalapan in week one and then the 48 nothing conquest of Howell in week two. And, and Oz, as I say, good evening and thanks for coming down and bringing all your bodyguards. <laughs> uh, I guess the first question I would have for you, you know, based on going one and nine last year, should we be surprised, and are you surprised at all that you're sitting 2-0? and oh? No, I mean, one year doesn't have any carryover to the next in terms of record. Uh, we knew what kind of talent we had coming back, and uh, we had back-to-back 9-0 and freshman teams. And, and even last year's team, uh, I don't think the record equated to the roster. We had a good roster, uh, just a few things that, you know, didn't go right. Uh, you know, we kind of did a, a critical self-analysis after the season. We knew which areas, and some of them were on me. Uh, making some some decisions that didn't go the way I thought they would and and uh, we adjusted uh, as we should was it humbling to go through what you went through last year <laughs> it's never fun you know <laughs> I mean it's it's sometimes it's not fun when you're winning um, yeah it was it's a difficult year it was a difficult year on everybody involved in the program but uh, you know again you know you kind of grind through it and you do learn from it I was talking to uh, Jake Kaznowski's dad uh, you know a former classmate of mine at Tom River South and uh, we were just talking about that. You know, you learn from those years, you know, whether you're as a player or as a coach. Um, and, and I think, you, you know, you get something out of it. Uh, you'd rather not have it, but when you do, you learn from it. Dave, that first game of the season obviously is very important. There's buildup all throughout the summer. You want to start the season off right, everything that comes along with that. Coming off the season that you had in 2017 and then the way you guys won week one against Manalpin, they score a touchdown under a minute left. You guys return the kickoff for a touchdown get the two-point conversion to win 15-14. How big was that in terms of the way you won it? And also, like I've had a lot of coaches tell me, you win that first game, it, it kind of validates everything that you guys have been trying to do throughout the offseason. Well, you know, you, you, you go at it pretty hard, you know, for a few months over, over the summertime. And, you know, we saw them in Alpen sitting there. And I saw them, I believe, three times in the preseason, and, and I thought they were a really good football team. I still do. Uh, they're big, strong, physical, well-coached. Um, you know, I, to be honest, when you look statistically at the game, it, it looked like they had the advantage. But if you were there, we, we dominated time of possession, which isn't one of the things they print in the paper. And uh, we felt like we were letting one slip away. And our kids knew that. Uh, and unfor- unfortunately, they kicked it to Deshaun, uh, which probably wasn't, wasn't the right move to do. But <laughs> they did. And uh, he took it to the house. And, and there was no indecision about going for two. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Mike Oswitz, my brother's offense coordinator, and with about 20 yards to go to the end zone, Deshaun's still not there yet. He's telling me we're going for two, and I'm like, let's just get into the end zone first, <laughs> make sure there's no hankies on the field. But, yeah, it was a big win, huge win. And, and we saw a bounce in practice. You know, that's when you see it. Uh, you know, you know, Ed, you know, that's what you're looking for. And we saw the bounce in practice, that, that you know, laser-like focus and uh, our practices. And that's kind of what we've been preaching. Listen, if you're gonna, you want to go where you want to go uh, by, by November and December, then, then you need to practice really well every period of every day. And we've seen that. You know, you mentioned your back-to-back freshman teams, 9-0. and that's, To me, that signals youth. You know, you mentioned the size of some of these guys that you brought with you tonight. That usually equals strength. What is the personality of this team? Well, we talk about being North tough, and, and, and that's something. We have a period. As a matter of fact, we had it today. Uh, once a week we come out right before we start, you know, getting into our, you know, game plan and prep. Uh, we go north tough for 10 to 15 minutes, and that means Lyman, bigs are going one-on-ones, good on good, best varsity on best varsity, JV, best JV on JV, and, and, and we split it up, and uh, a lot of one-on-one tackling, and we battle, and those guys earn, right, the right to be out there and, and to feel like, you know, when they take that field on a Friday night or Saturday, they are tough, and they've been through the grind, all right, during the week. You know, this hasn't been the easiest of preseasons. First the heat, yeah. then the rain. You know, how have you handled the preseason? We, and I, I know you had your last scrimmage canceled. Also. We, we did, which was – and that was tough going before Manalapan because I knew what Manalapan was as a coach and as a staff, and we knew what Brick was. We wanted to find out about ourselves before we got to Manalapan. We right. weren't able to do that, uh, but we did play in a tough Allentown team, and, and, and we played very well against them in three quarters of play. Uh, we felt like we'd come out and play hard and, and, and be in the game with Manalapan. Uh, I can't say I'm surprised at the result, but maybe the way it, it turned out as far as that last kickoff. But, um, you know, getting through the summer, these kids have worked as hard as – and every coach says that, but it's the truth. We push this group about as hard as you could possibly push a group, right, within reason at this day and age in coaching, <laughs> okay? And these kids just kind of smiled, grit their teeth, you know, and they're like, 
we'll take more. And, and, and so we kind of look at each other as a staff and like, man, we got something here, you know, as far as these guys got the work ethic to succeed and, and they certainly have the talent. Now it's just a matter of, of, of just stringing practices together and, and uh, coming out and playing your best on a Friday night. You know, football, the season is so short in terms of number of games. You know, you play soccer, baseball, basketball, you lose on a Tuesday, you might play again on Thursday. You get a chance to come right back. Football doesn't work that way. So the emphasis on early season, it's really not early season. And I'm wondering, the way you won your opening game, is that the kind of victory that can actually carry you for three months? Well, I don't know that. I, I can't say we've ever had a win like that early in the year, certainly not in an opener. Uh, I don't know if we've ever had an opponent that tough as an opener either since I've been the head coach and maybe in, in general. Um, we're going to find out, but it, we talk about it. You know, we won that game. We, we, we said put that to bed because, really, it means nothing if you don't come back and work hard for the next week and get that win. And the way we practiced last week was as good as any group as we've had here in a long time. I would say going back to the 07 North team, which I generally regard as, as the best team that we've ever had here as far as the way they went about their business. And – we looked like that last week. Now, I'm not saying we have that same roster, and I'm not saying we're going to have the same result, but what we did during the week, it's been impressive, and it's carried over through this week as well. You know, Dave, going back, uh, you know, 2015, you guys won a state title. 2016, obviously that 11-1 team. Those, you had a lot of good players on those teams on both <laughs> sides of the ball, but, you know, some elite offensive players that you just – those guys don't walk in, you know, through the door every day. Mike Husney, you know uh, – you know, Carrington, Darren Carrington, Bryce Watts, who's mm -hmm. playing at Virginia Tech now, Parker Day. I mean, the list kind of goes on. Big win over Howe, 48, you know, nothing. Uh, and some of the new skill players really, you know, showing what they could do. Jared Pruitt at running back, Jake Kazanowski at quarterback, Aaron Craig, and I know you have a bunch more. Just how about that new crop of skill players and a lot of those guys, young guys too, who look like they're going to, you know, really be able to make a big impact week in week. Well, you know, Ed said it. It starts up front. And we're big, thick, and, and we preach being physical, and I believe we're getting to the point where we can compete with anybody in the trenches. But, you know, we do feel real good about our skill component on the perimeter. Of course, Jake is the point guard, and, uh, you know, we have high you know, expectations of him. Um, we think he's, he's a guy potentially to be a you know, FBS quarterback, and uh, he has wideouts that he can deliver the football to, and Dominic Jacob and Aaron Craig and, and Will Marsh, who, who, who's one of our captains and is as good a – he's an undercover guy in Ocean County and maybe the Shore area, but you know, he's a six foot two, 205-pound guy that does the dirty work in terms of doing the blocking, and he, get, he could run the middle and hurt you and, and win that matchup against the linebackers. And, and we have a younger crop that's pushing – Dominic and, and Aaron and some of these guys, and, and of course, Deshaun in the slot. You know, it goes without saying we wouldn't be 2 and out without him. Uh, we have guys that are difference makers, a lot like some of the teams that we've had in the past uh, when, when we've gone, you know, the distance. Let me just say you're listening to the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner right here on 105.7 The Hawk. We're broadcasting live from the office, restaurant, and lounge. It's Tom's River North Night, and we're chatting with head coach Dave Ozowitz. Ed? Dave, it's never easy to have a sophomore quarterback. Right. And uh, Jake certainly has stepped up in the first couple of games. How scary was it to throw him out there? I know you said his skill level is pretty high. Tell us a little bit about those skills. We, we never had any doubt. Uh, late last year, you know, I actually told some of the guys that were competing for the job that uh, we brought Jake up late after his freshman season, and he actually played the second half of our consolation game against Kingsway and, 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 and took a beating and stood in there and, and never looked at the rush. You know, you know a lot about a quarterback because quarterbacks are either going to feel the rush or they're going to look at the rush. And if they're staring at the rush, they're in trouble, okay, no matter how bad or, or good the line is, he did not even flinch in the pocket. Now, the result wasn't what, what he wanted and what we wanted maybe in that game, but we knew what we had going into it based on his production at the freshman level. It was pretty much off the charts. And uh, all summer, you know, it, was, it wasn't a competition. It was about supporting him and coaching him up. Uh, you know, he's 6'2", he's 180 pounds. His dad's probably about 6'4". Uh, you know, 240, he was a great athlete in his own right. Soccer, baseball at South, and, uh, and his mom might be the best athlete in the whole family. So, <laughs> um, uh, you know, we feel like the sky's the limit for him. The best thing about Jake is he, he has an unflappable persona. I, I probably said five words to him all summer. He'd probably agree with that. Uh, you know, when he does do something wrong, he doesn't get upset, but he self-corrects himself. Very coachable, ultra-intelligent, 
Um, he has all the intangibles. I think the kids look at him, even though he's a sophomore. Quarterbacks are naturally have to be innately a leader. He is, um, and he's a fiery competitor. And uh, I don't think he was real pleased with his performance against Manalapan. Uh, especially in the first half. But once he got his legs in the second half, he started – he made some plays with his feet moving in the pocket uh, without looking at the rush and, and looking downfield and making plays that enabled us to stay in that game and eventually win it. Uh, the two-point conversion, I think you guys saw it. Yeah. I mean, he got rushed off his left side. He felt that the kid uh, uh, from Deshaun Taylor from an Alpins, an all-short kid, was, was kind of pressuring from the left side. He scrambled to his right and hit Deshaun, kept his head up. Uh, and then he was, you know, on the money against against Howell from the get-go. And by the way, he was also voted this week as our Shore Sports Network Orthopedic Institute of Central Jersey Player of the Week by fans. If you go on shoresportsnetwork.com, you read all about that. And had I known we could have done it, we actually have a game ball for him, but I'll, I'll get it to you. And you That's can, great. He deserves it for yeah, sure. Pass it on, and the fans have spoken. That's a fan vote, and the Mariner fans uh, sort of came out. Dave, uh, now that we look, now we can look down the road a little bit. Now, I know how coaches work. It's one week at a time. So this Saturday, Saturday afternoon, by the way, you're home against Central Regional. Team, you've had a pretty good rivalry with the past couple of years. They might be down a little bit. Uh, they're looking for their first win. Uh, I would imagine they'd like nothing more than to come into your place and, and steal one. What can you tell us about them? And what do you need to do now to make sure your guys understand that every week becomes a new challenge? You know, we watch film on them, and if you look at them, you, you, we talk about bouncing from week to week. Dave, and, Dave improved tremendously from week one when they, when they played Brick Memorial, uh, and then from week two against Howell, who we just played, to week three against Freel Township, where they played them to a stalemate and physically really got after them. They're very fast on defense. They're athletic. On the perimeter, skill-wise, um, you know, they may be our equal. They are very, very athletic. Uh, Darius Martirano is as good a player as you'll find in the short conference, yep. uh, playing wide out and as a returner in the secondary. So we got our work cut out, and we have had a very good rivalry with them. We played them for the A-South title two years ago. Uh, Justin's done a great job with them. Uh, they're always physical. They get after you. They play a certain style, you know, reminiscent of Manalapan. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a war on Saturday afternoon. Our kids know it. They're ready. It's got to be satisfying, again, to be 2-0. I know, like Kevin was saying, it's early, but it's not because the season is short in terms of games. You know, how, how much fun has it been just so far? Again, it's early, but you have a, a young group of kids and some seniors as well, but it just seems like this is a team that you can kind of sense if they do what they're supposed to do, I mean, good things could be in store. Yeah, they have, they have a lot of potential. They do, but potential don't mean a whole lot <laughs> unless they're, they're actually, you know, fulfilling it. And, and right now so far – they're meeting what we thought they could do early in the year. Um, we felt like we would be a contender. We are. Um, no one's really, you know, separated themselves yet, uh, you know, because you're two weeks in. You know, you, nobody knows what's going to happen. There's, there's an attrition rate. There's going to be injuries, injuries to key players, which does play a role. Um, you know, you hope you stay, you, you know, you stay, you stay healthy. But, you know, all we can do is take care of practicing really, really hard and, and executing whatever our plan is. They've done a great job of that. And uh, we're going to have to continue to do that if we, if we want to be able to. And our, listen, the goal is always to contend for the division. We want to do that and then make the playoffs. And that's a little cloudy as far as how you make it. You know, I think you guys <laughs> join, talked about join that. Join the group. I actually emailed uh, Bill Bourne from the Bourne Index this week because I was stumped on how we could be yeah. 2-0 and and be behind Manalapan in, in the Bourne Index. I, you know, yeah. they're 0-2. I, I don't get it. Nobody I, understands it. And I just wanted to know, and he said, just give it some time, so I'm going to give it some time. But the reality is it really doesn't matter if you do what you're supposed to do every week. You know, that kind of takes care of itself. It just comes down to seeding. What's your take on the new alignment in the Shore and your conference? I'm a big proponent of it. Uh, you know, I used to have this discussion with Joe Arminio, former athletic director, and I've told uh, Ted Gillen the same thing. I love it. Because for us, we compete with those big South Jersey Group 5 schools. They're aligned, a lot of it, by size and, and ability. And so for us to be in the American, you know, we're going against schools that have won a lot of games, all right, and are also mostly Group 5s, other than Middletown South and, and Central. And But the, both of those programs have won a lot of games the past few years. So that's where we want to be. In order to stay there, we got to win – every year <laughs> yeah. so you know that puts a little pressure on you to make sure you stay where you want to be because you want to be able to qualify for five in, in south jersey five it's not that easy you know you, you need to win six games to get in and for a lot of schools a lot of coaches are not happy about it because they lost so many of what they consider their rivalry games from the geographic 
basis. For you, at least, you still get to play your two sister Toms over schools back-to-back right. -back weeks later in the year. So those rivalries stay intact. They stay intact. I mean, we do miss playing Brick Township. If there was one team, and that's why Lenny and I kind of came together, and he called me, and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Both programs wanted to play each other in the game scrimmage. Uh, we'll try to keep that rolling if we don't wind up in the same division. But, you know, we do miss Brick Township, and uh, Brick Memorial is always a war, and uh, Jackson Memorial, those three teams. But it didn't actually help us playing them. So for, for us, in terms of what's good for your program, I was a big proponent of being able to play the big group fives in Monmouth County and Southern Regional. I'm glad we were able to get them as well in Ocean County non-conference. Well, it's a far cry from last year. Uh, I remember we had you on last year in before week one. I remember. And I think we all thought, despite the fact that you graduated so many talented players from an 11-1 team that was a few minutes away maybe from being the number one public school in the state, we certainly had pretty good expectations. I think you did. It didn't work out that way. But uh, you've already doubled your win total, and it's still middle of September. Just got to worry about tomorrow. <laughs> You're going to say that. Oz, we, uh, we always uh, appreciate uh, you coming on and talking football with us. We'll look forward to seeing you down the road on a couple of Friday nights. And uh, we're excited to get a chance to talk with a couple of your co-captains. And uh, uh, thanks again. And uh, really appreciate our program, really appreciates everything you guys do for short conference football. Uh, it's amazing. You, gotta, you, gotta, you cover it, you know, every single thing, every aspect of it. I know for me as a coach, the first thing I do is, you know, type in shoresportsnetwork.com and, and read, read your blog and read all the stuff that you guys got out there as far as top plays because, you know, as coaches, we only, we're in a little box. We only get a chance <laughs> to see what we see on film and get a chance to see how many, how many good football teams and coaches and programs are out there in the short. You guys do a great job. Well, we're very Thank lucky you. to have people like you in short conference football we're going to take a break we come back we'll talk with a couple of those big mariners right after this you're listening to the gateway toyota coaches corner on 1057 the hawk 36 month lease with approved credit through tfs corolla 5189 and rav4 4988 do it signing zero dollar security deposit excludes tax tag title 439 talk fee 10k miles per year ends 930 2018 get it all at gateway toyota it's tailgate time right now at gateway toyota drive new 2019 corolla le cbt or 2018 rav4 le all-wheel drive your choice only 139 a month 139 a month get it all at gateway toyota tom's river gateway toyota.com the kids are back in school, everyone's busy, and dinner is left to the last minute. Don't worry, head to the office restaurant and lounge, where you'll find a menu with choices that'll make everyone happy. From burgers to pasta, steak to sushi, and salads to sandwiches, the biggest problem will be choosing what to order. And they offer a kid's menu. Also, check out The West, the new casual dining room with high-top tables and chairs, and 13 TVs to watch your favorite games. Tom's River's place to meet and eat for 42 years is the office restaurant and lounge at the intersection of Route 30 in Main Street. Now back to the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner, powered by Gateway Toyota, Route 37 East in Toms River. Get it all at Gateway. Classic rock for the Jersey Shore. 1057 The Hawk and 1057TheHawk.com. From the crowded West Room at the Office Restaurant and Lounge in Toms River, it is the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner. Tonight we're talking Toms River High School North football. By the way, a couple of programming notes. Next Wednesday, we go back to our other location. We're at River Rock Restaurant and Marina Bar in Brick. Friday night, the Jersey Mike's Game of the Week will find us at Toms River South as the Indians take on Toms River East in the first of the all uh, Toms River battles. That game on our sister station, 92.7 FM, kicking off at 7 o'clock. And, of course, you can watch the video all season long, shoresportsnetwork.com. This show being streamed live with a live studio audience, and uh, you can check it out on the website 24-7, this and all the broadcast stuff we do. Uh, great talking with Coach Dave Ozowitz and a couple of his uh, senior uh, co-captains, guys he speaks very highly of. Uh, Stavon Drew and Jordan Johnson are good enough to join us. Bob takes a little break. He's on a union break. Uh, Ed and I up here, and I'm going to, because you're next to me, Jordan, I'm going to start with you. Uh, Three-year starter. I remember you as a sophomore. You were one of the leading tacklers on the team as a sophomore team that was loaded with seniors. And I, I kind of have to ask you, I mean, there you were uh, a, a few minutes away maybe from going 12-0, and 0, and then you go through what you went through last year. How personally, how difficult was it for you to experience that? You know, um, I've been on winning teams. I've been on losing teams. And then it feels great. I mean, we, we're 2-0, and 0, but uh, – we're not stuck on it because in the back of our head, we know what we went through and all the losses, and um, we know where we want to go. So 
I feel like we just start with work ethic. We come out every day, we put in the work, and um, no matter what the weather is, what what is, there's no excuse because uh, we got to work if we want to get to where we want to go. But was it painful last year, like week in and week out, to suffer those losses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was definitely, it was definitely a lot because I went on, I was on the team that went 11 and one, went all the way to the states, and um, we didn't finish what we wanted to do, but um, then going one and nine, it. It, it hurts, but uh, that's why every every week we're going to give everyone our best shot. Stavon, when exactly was it determined that you were going to be one of the co-captains? Was it the coach's decision? Was it the players who voted? Tell us about that step in your season. Um, last year, uh, the coaches made me the coach's captain, but I think the players wanted me to be the captain also because – I work with them. We all work together. We all are a team together. You know what I mean? I'm not going to yell at them like the captain, like the coaches do sometimes because a coach has to be hard on them. But I think that we should work together, be a team, and I think that's why they picked me. So were you one of the guys during the summer? You know, because let's face it, we, all, we know, you know, we've played this game. We know that the season isn't during the season. You know, those are the wins and losses. It's over the summer in the weight room on the practice field, that's when seasons are won and lost. How yeah. was that? Yeah, I think this summer we, we put in the work. We, we, we went hard every day. We tried to get better, and we pushed each other. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, I got a chance to go out to your guys' practice last week to present you as our Jersey Mike's Team of the Week, right? Came out there, took some pictures with you, brought you the $500 for Jersey Mike's, which I'm sure you'll chow down at some point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that week one victory because you're fighting Manalapan tooth and nail. It's a tie game. Probably thinking at some point maybe this game's going to overtime. They score the touchdown, and I would imagine some of the North fans might have even gotten in their cars and gone home. But, boy, they missed something else. Tell me what the feeling was when you saw your teammate Wilder run in the end zone and then Kazanowski hit him for the two-point conversion. I mean, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> that's my boy. And um, I, I tell him, like, we have um, – great athletes all around like uh wide receiver running back we have a lot of weapons and um i feel like they just kicked it to the wrong person <laughs> <laughs> um it's definitely like uh, a game changer when you have a player like that that's someone that can um, perform when you need it so you know they talk about the thrill of victory the agony of defeat you guys experience would almost look like both in a matter of a minute yeah. and i mean i would imagine when that clock hit zero and you realize you had a win that was a great bus ride home it, it, it was crazy i i literally every time we walked out to the defense i'm like we got to get this we got to get this and then they score and we walk over to the kick return huddle i'm like we need this well, let's get it and we went out there and did our thing and i mean it could have went either way but um i feel like we just keep keep pushing keep pushing and we, we just don't give up Stavon, tell us about the two-point play now. You were in the huddle, right? Yes, sir. Tell us about the anticipation. Was there a timeout after the touchdown? Do you uh, remember? No, nah, I don't remember. Okay, so you got right into the two-point play. Tell us about the, you know, your quarterback and said, you know, what did he tell you guys up front? Because, hey, the game's on the line now, two-point conversion. I think everybody, like, we weren't nervous because we, at, during the week, we practiced North Tough. And we practice. You you have to work hard throughout the whole game, so you can't give up. So I think that helps us. That helped us not be nervous and just push it on in. So it was it was it a prepared play that two point conversion, or just one of the plays that you had run throughout the game? Um, it was first time you ran it during the game. Yes, it was. Okay, that's impressive. All right, Stavon. When we have offensive linemen on, I mean, <laughs> I, I the skill guys are pansies let's be honest okay <laughs> you guys you guys all make it happen so i want you to give a shout out give us the name of all your fellow offensive linemen the starting unit the guys who you get out there with on the heat the hot days and you're in the line and you're doing all the hard work so guys like kazanowski can look good who are they we got kaz we have uh Nashe, we have um rinda we have uh dan crow we also have uh cross uh, he just got uh, – he's new this year, but he's hes with us this year. He's pushing – he's just like he's been there since the beginning. Who's who's the real star in the weight room of that group? Who's the guy? It's not a real star. We just all push each other. We work together. 
But if there was a star, I would say, like, Tommy Monaco in defense, he pushes us, he makes us better out there. Well, I tell you what, you're a good captain. See, you're trying to just make that whole team thing. It's all about the team, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallenbeck, though. I mean, you know, when you look, are you next to each other on the line? Not anymore. Okay, he's so on, he's, he's on the other side. Yes, sir. Okay, but how's it feel? You're not the biggest guy up there, and you, and you go about 260, right? Yes, sir. What's he, three bills? <laughs> yeah, he's up there. <laughs> he's up there. I mean, you know, that's some, that's some heavy guys up there. Mm -hmm. You can move the ball, uh, you know, on anybody, I think. Yes, sir. I and, think so, too. And he's skilled because he'll tell you he's a good basketball player, right? He'll yes, be sir. the first to tell you that. So you know he's got some agility up there, and that's what it takes to be a good offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's, 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 he's a good player because he's very humble. He's always uh, willing to learn. He's always willing to um, push everybody together. Definitely this year, he's uh, more. He's like a captain this year. He's out there yelling just like I am. He's pushing us to be better this and year. Only a junior, right? Yes, sir. Who's the guy who would do the most damage in an all-you-can-eat buffet? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he's got to be up there, right, Hallenbeck? I think so. He. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've eaten with him and. Uh, his breakfast is bigger than mine, so <laughs> and I eat a lot. So. <laughs> We're talking with Stavon Drew and how Jordan Johnson a couple of times over North Captain. How about the funny guy? Who's the funny guy up there? Cross. Cross? <laughs> yeah, he talks about our pasta parties almost every day. <laughs> and how about the serious guy that you can't fool around with? I think I'm the serious guy. You really? Are. Okay. Yes, there you go. Well, he keeps calling us sir. I mean, he's pretty <laughs> serious, you know. He's very respectful, very respectful. Uh, you know, this is all fun, and we're, and we're having a lot of laughs here. But, you know, football's tough. It's a, it's a hard game. Now, you've got Central on Saturday. They're a dangerous, winless team because, you know, I'm sure they're selling their kids all week, hey, this makes your season. You're going to beat those guys. Are you gonna be, uh, will you be ready for Saturday afternoon? Yeah, d definitely. I mean, we go, we've been out there. We keep working, keep working, and. We're ready. I mean, just because the record may not be as successful or they have losses, that doesn't mean anything. We're going we're gonna to bring it to them. Two years ago, did you play next to LaQualia? Yep, Peter LaQualia. What, what, you know, who's, you know, what, well, definitely an all-shore, made some all-state teams. Oh, yeah. What did you learn from him as a sophomore playing with the senior? It was definitely a crazy experience because – at such a young age, I didn't expect to just, oh, I'm that guy. And um, to be put next to Pete, Pete was a great player. He's so fast and strong and physical. And, I mean, it was a lot from the transition. My coach told me, he was like, this isn't a freshman anymore. And uh, I seen that. And uh, definitely being next to Pete, it was a great experience. And um, I've learned a lot from him. I'll ask you both the same question. What's the most important thing, the most important part of being a captain? Being positive. Yeah, no, mat no matter what the situation. Yeah, yep. no matter what it is, you have to stay positive. You have to believe in your team because if you don't believe, they won't believe. Just buy in. Like he said, stay positive and keep your head on. Keep your head on straight. Now, you're both seniors, so we'll always like to ask seniors the question, number one, do you play any other sports? And number two, what about college? Is football in your future? Steve, I'll go with you first. Um, yeah, f football is in my future, I think. I'm not too sure yet, but I know I want to go to – Campbell University and for optometry so wow. that's something I want to do I mean but if football calls me to do that then that's what I'll do that's the Campbell Camels right isn't that their nickname yes sir They're the Campbell Camels all right one hump or two how about you yeah I, I see it in my future I mean I obviously want to go to school and um, major in something but um, I'm not pretty sure what that is yet but want to play football I definitely want to play football well, you guys have a lot of football left to play this year. Uh, hopefully, if all things chi chips fall well, you could be playing in December. Yep. And you're only playing in December if you're at MetLife in one of those bowl games. So uh, I want to thank you both for coming down. You are uh, great representatives of your team, your school, and your families. Uh, wish you all the best the rest of this senior year and look forward to seeing you down the road. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, hang on one second. Stay on, Drew, and, uh, of course, uh, Jordan Johnson, captains, a couple of the captains from Tom's River High School North, uh, doing a great job uh, talking Mariner football. We're going to take a break. When we come back, Bob will rejoin us, and we'll sort of take a look at this uh, weekend of uh, high school football, the schedule for the weekend, the top ten, and much more. You are listening to the, the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner on 105.7 The Hawk. You're a football fan, and sometimes you want to watch the games with your friends and other fans. The Office Restaurant and Lounge loves football and invites you to watch all the games in their 28 HD TVs and take advantage of their awesome $6 football menu. On Thursday and Sunday, buy a 22-ounce mug for $4 and get refills of Miller Lite or Coors Light for just $2. Enjoy football with your friends at Tom's River's Place to meet and eat for 42 years. The Office Restaurant and Lounge at the intersection of Route 37 and Main. Street. 36 month lease with approved credit through TFS. Corolla 5189 and RAV4 4988 due at signing. $0 security deposit. Excludes tax, tag title, 439 tax fee. 10K miles per year. Ends 930 2018. Get it all at Gateway Toyota. It's tailgate time right now at Gateway Toyota. Drive new 2019 Corolla LE CBT or 2018 RAV4 LE all wheel drive. Your choice. Only $139 a month. $139 a month. Get it all at Gateway Tom's River Gateway Toyota.com. You're listening to the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner. Classic rock for the Jersey Shore. 1057 The Hawk and 1057 The Hawk.com. The show within the show is always the best part. The commercial breaks can be very entertaining. <laughs> what an outstanding job by uh, Jordan and Stavon. Uh, that was a lot of fun talking to them. And uh, we certainly do wish them uh, the best of luck. Got a nice crowd here. A lot of Mariner support in the house here at the West Room at the Office Restaurant and Lounge in uh, Tom's River. We're here every other week. Next week, we're at River Rock Restaurant and Marina Bar in Brick. And, of course, uh, as we said, Friday night, our Jersey Mike's uh, Game of the Week sends us to Tom's River South. Uh, just a good uh, Good uh, uh, nine iron from here for, <laughs> for the uh, first of the all Tom's River games uh, south against uh, east. Of course, we'll have, uh, we'll have the other ones as well down the road. Well, I was just going to say, we'll have north back-to-back -back weeks in October uh, against south and also against east. You know, one, one on the road, one home. So looking forward to seeing this team, and who knows, they could be undefeated by then. Yeah, well, you're right. Uh, in, hey, Bob, are start. Yes. Would we would we call them one of the early season surprises? Now, oh. I, 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 let's be honest. We we knew Manalapan had graduated a lot of talent, mm -hmm. but we always say with Manalapan, they've got a program there to the point now where they don't rebuild. They kind of reload, and and I st I agree with you. I still think they're going to be a good football team, but that was a game that really did surprise all of us. Let's be honest. Absolutely. You know, Manalapan lost a ton. Uh, and kind of in a similar position to what Tom's North was coming into last season. Uh, but you look at Manalpa. Manalpa's 0-2. Is that a surprise? Certainly. But now you look at the teams they've played two weeks in, and, and you say, okay, Manalpa's also lost two games by a combined four points. So, you know, the Braves, I think, will be a very good team down the road. Uh, Tom's North, as far as them being a surprise, I'd say you put them in that category. I think we've all heard the talk. You know, Tom's North... You know, they got a lot of young talent coming in. But you never know how quickly that's going to yep. take. And we talked about it, too. Are, are they going to be good right away? Are, are they building towards something in the next couple of years? But also, so, are teams arrive ahead of schedule, um, you know, at least schedule from the outside, you know, quicker th than usual sometimes. So a little bit of a surprise, but also at the same time, I think seeing them, too, you know, it's not a shock. You know, it's something definitely we anticipated could happen. Yeah, the talk all summer, Kevin, was – a year away the Mariners are a year away you know with the good back-to-back -back freshman classes you know you know their sophomores and juniors this year well guess what they've stepped it up big time filter in some of these seniors you know those two kids there were impressive seniors you know and, and when you got leadership like that it could bring these kids along and then of course uh, the quarterback has fit in nicely you know, I, I look at the uh, standings, the Shore Conference football standings, and I think we're all still getting a feel for the new divisions. Number one, I miss A South, A North. It was yeah. so easy, and you know. But uh, I, I said all along by Thanksgiving, I hope to have it down. But you know, you have two. C you have a couple teams sitting there at three and O. Uh, three of them: Modern Day Prep, not a surprise at all. Red Bank Catholic, not of course not a surprise. Lacey's the three and O. 
that I don't know that anyone would have predicted they would have been 3-0 and outside of those who live in the 08731 or 08734 zip code. Uh, they've won some close games, but they had a very good senior class last year. Uh, and are, are they, uh, would they go, Bob, as one of your real surprises so far? First, I must commend your zip code knowledge. That's, Thank you. It's quite I'm impressive. pretty good at zip code. But yeah. <laughs> you should have no problem with the divisions then. You'll be good to go. <laughs> but with Lacey, certainly, you mentioned what they graduated. A very good senior class. And within that senior class, you're talking about a quarterback, a two-year starter, and Colton Kloss, uh, you know, who was very good both throwing the ball and running the ball. Jason Gerisi, the running back, who was a really a classic Lacey between the tackles, running yep. back, physical player, uh, played well in the all-shore game. You know, wide receiver, Tanner Mick. Uh, you know, you had offensive lineman, John Carter. Like, you had a lot of key guys at a lot of different spots. So you look at Lacey coming into the season – in a different division uh, with, you know, with Jackson uh, and Wall, two teams that we knew were going to be very tough. And hey, here we are, Lacey 3-0. and They still have the teeth of their schedule coming up. But all you can ask from a team is to win the games out in front of them, and they've done that. You talked talk about ugly games earlier, the 12-6 Jackson win yeah. over Wall. Well, Lacey won 6-3 over Southern. So another defensive struggle. But again, they are 3-0. and No one, I'm pretty sure, saw that coming uh so, so good for the Lions to get out to a strong start they've put themselves into position now where if they play jackson and wall the teams that were favoring that division they're right there where a win really puts them in contention for a division title and they play at wall on friday yeah, night. they'll be they'll be tested the next two weeks with wall and then jackson mm -hmm. yeah that division that division race could be all but decided in two weeks to yeah, be honest we, with you we you consistently know. said that yeah. during the broadcast uh you know, uh, and the other thing to take out of that is how, what kind of condition that field was ruined. I mean, <laughs> it was horrible to begin with, and now playing a, you know, two out, two and a half hours on it, you know, I, they're going to have to really work to get that field back in yeah. shape. Yeah, that's true. There's a, there's some interesting games this week. You know, we've gotten to the point where, again, it's, it's only week three, so you have some teams playing their fourth game, most playing yep. their third, obviously, but we already see the division starting to shake out in the sense where. You can look down the line right now and be like, okay, these two, this game between these two teams is probably going to be the one that decides the division. And in most divisions, you can say that with a pretty good certainty. The one division that you can't is that Constitution division with Jackson and Wall and, and Lacey. I think that one looks a little bit more wide open. But again, we have these games coming up that are going to be pretty important. One of those in the Colonial division is Freehold and Brick. You know, Brick, and that's where I'll be on Friday night. Uh, you know, over there at Kelly Memorial Field. Brick coming off the loss to St. John Vianney. Freehold, 2-0. Surprise may be a strong word because they have a better roster. I think people gave them credit for coming in. But, you know, Freehold with a chance to move to 3-0. and Still has Rumson on their schedule, so a chance in that division. Uh, and then Brick uh, wanted to bounce back, and that's another revenge game. They lost to Freehold two years in a row, uh, you know, in the playoffs. So that, that should be a very interesting one on Friday night. If I look at the Shore Sports Network top ten from this week, Red Bank Catholic, Modern Day, Modern Day Prep, Rumson, one, two, three. I believe so far they may have separated themselves from the rest of the field. Long Branch, four. Toms River North, unranked to start the season, is up to number five. Manasquan, six. Middletown South, off the big one over Manalapan, is at seven. St. John Vianney jumps back in with the impressive win over Brick. Brick goes out. Uh, losing that game. Freehold 9, Jackson Memorial uh, stays at 10. To me, there's a huge difference between, let's put it, the top five and the bottom five or the top four and the bottom six. Uh, but as you said, you know, like I, I talked to someone this week and, you know, they said, well, how can Brick drop from four out of the pole? And I said, well, who, who, would, who should get knocked out? St. John Vianney beat them by 14 points. Vianney has to be ranked ahead of them. And we, you and I have always said with these polls, they all work themselves out in the long run. It means nothing now. Well, it's November when it counts. Right. Brick has a chance right away Absolutely. to get right back in. They play a 2-0 free old team that right now is ahead of them, ranked number nine. Yep. They beat them. They're back into the top and ten. And that's absolutely the thought. In putting that together, you know what I'm saying? You know, St. John Manny has to be in. They just beat the number four team in the shore. So, okay, where's Brick go? Does Brick deserve to be completely out of the top ten? Probably not just based on losing one game and losing to a team that we know is talented. But we're well, not going to drop Freehold, you know, we're not going to drop Freehold Burrow out off a win or Jackson off a win. Yep. So, again, Brick, you know, if we did a top 11, they're right there at 11 this week. But as you said, Ed, they get a chance right away and they play a schedule that gives them plenty of opportunities, uh, you know, to prove 
exactly where they belong. Let's talk a little bit, Kev, about Tom, uh, St. John Vianney. Their quarterback is starting to play a lot better. He played great the other day against Brick through some touchdown passes. They are about ready to get their transfer kid eligible, and he's a quarterback. What do they do? Well, I imagine Josh East just moves to wide, wide receiver. Out. I imagine that's where his brother Sam East uh, was a, a very good wide receiver threat for them the last two years. Uh, I'm pretty sure that that's where Josh plays. He's a wide out. You know their running back is Kayvon Chambers. So that just, to me, that just gives them another weapon on the outside. They have Jaden Bellamy, the, the very talented sophomore, the son of, uh, of course, of assistant coach Jay Bellamy, who had a, you know, a double-digit NFL career. Uh, so you know, he, you know he's a coach well in the <laughs> fundamentals. A six foot six tight end in Andrew McGimsey, uh, and two all shore caliber linemen in, uh, in C.J. Hansen and Paul Asino. So you start to see, at least on the offensive side, the pieces start to you know, get into place where they envision them, uh, and now maybe the Lancers can get on a little bit of a roll. Mention that quarterback who I was talking That's about. That's C.J. Duell, uh, the transfer. Duell. Uh, Tom's River resident, played at St. Joseph's Prep in Philadelphia uh, the last couple years. So um, he came in. Um, it was ruled that he had to sit uh, the first you know, four games uh, because of the NJSA transfer rule. They appealed that. It, the appeal did not work out. So uh, he's, you know, he's got to sit for the – you know, the next 30 game. days. So, right. Yeah, 30 days. Um, they were a week zero team, so that's the end of the month as opposed to that the first week in October. So, But I think St. John Vianney, they certainly found something in that game. You know, defensively, they played much better um, after allowing, you know, 80-plus points in those first two weeks. Um, mm. And, again, the, the talent is there. They lost a ton. Talk about teams that lost lots of graduation there. You probably put St. John Vianney at the very top of that list. Um, so – going to be a little bit of a you know time to work things out but i don't think it would surprise anyone to see them go on a little run here and all of a sudden you look up and uh you know they've got five wins uh among the top 10 matchups this week there's no two teams playing each other ranked in the top 10 you mentioned Freeld and brick number nine Freeld against brick who dropped out maybe the game on paper that looks the best interesting in that number one red bank catholic will play friday at red bank their rival school, who's yeah. two and zero, oh, and Nick Iglio's done a nice job with that team. And listen, it would it would be, it would be a huge upset, but be a lot of interest in Red Bank this weekend. Absolutely, and you know, for both those teams to be undefeated, it will just lend to the atmosphere. You know, Red Bank gets a very good crowd over there yep. uh, for those games. And you know, you remember a few years ago, uh, Red Bank's magical season when they were undefeated. They had that win o over RBC at home, and, and that was one of the best game atmospheres that. I've seen, you know, in, in my time covering Shore Conference football. We did, so. we did that game. Yeah, yeah, that we were fun. there, and, and that it was, was awesome. Great and, game. and if you're Red Bank, you come in, yeah, look, you got nothing to lose in that game. Yes, it's a division game, but you're 2-0. You know, you're going against the number one team in the Shore, you know, a top 15 team in the state. You just go out there. That's where you let it hang out. If you got any trick plays in, in the back <laughs> and there's time to use that's when you do it. So, uh, yeah, yeah that, that should be a fun one. Well, uh Weekend coming up. A lot of games on Saturday this weekend, unusually. As a matter of fact, Tom's River North is playing a home Saturday Yeah, I was going to ask game. him about that. I you think know, they're why? doing a couple of those. I think because South and East are playing, playing on Friday, Friday night. night. That used to be an old rule yeah, in Tom's they, River. Yeah. And, and one of those uh, good Saturday games, uh, two undefeated teams, uh, a good one in the, uh, in the Liberty Division. Manasquan, you know, welcomes in Raritan. Raritan 2-0. Uh, maybe another one of the surprise teams that we, we haven't mentioned. You know, wins over Neptune and yep. then. You know, kind of won a back-and-forth battle with Monmouth Regional last week. So that should be a good one uh, in that division. Both those teams undefeated. The winner certainly gets a leg up. At a Southern Ocean County battle Friday night, Pinelands heads to Barnegat. That, yeah. That's let's, a big one. Let's keep an eye on that game. I agree. You know, Barnegat undefeated, but Pinelands on a roll. That's a team they're familiar with from playing in Class B South over the past few years. I mean, it's a rivalry. You know, those schools are right down there on Route 9, separated by about 10, 15 miles. So, yeah, that should be a nice atmosphere as well. Thank you time for us. We thank Dave Oswitz and, of course, Dave Andrew and Jordan Johnson from Toms of the North. The North fans who came out to support their team, great to see them here tonight. Uh, special thanks, of course, to the guys who make it all happen here. Uh, Tom Tremblay, Brad Buriscano, Greg Lerner, Katie O'Keefe back at the studios of the Hawk, and our host Nick Pagano in the office restaurant and lounge. We can't thank them enough, the waitress, the servers, and staff here. Uh, we love being here. We'll be back here in a couple of weeks. Uh, for Bob Batters and Ed Sarluka, I'm Kevin Williams. You've been listening to the Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner on 105.7 The Hawk. Good night, everyone.
No problem. Thank you. The Gateway Toyota Coaches Corner.